let's become a little bit more tricky. So far, everything we did here were flat surfaces. And let's maybe from a side try to draw the top part being arced. And maybe also the sides being arced. Sounds complicated, but uh, it's not really that hard. So what do we do first? I have to figure out, for example, where, for example, this line would be. So from the vanishing point, first one line to there, and a vanishing line to this point. And then a vanishing line from there to there. So I see, for example, where. My other line is there. And I mark this one down. And those lines I remove. Perfect. What would happen? There should be a line. And I also constructed this line because with drawing from this point to the vanishing point, it cuts my boundary box there. So from there to there, there's my back corner. Now that one is arced. And maybe uh, just draw this blue line in. Okay, so uh, what should we do first? Well, maybe, maybe let's try to arc this top surface. But it could be quite interesting actually to do. So what I need is first kind of like to figure out how far, for example, do these points dip down. It touches kind of like my boundary box there. So uh, what I need to figure out first is my midpoint of my boundary box. And that, for example, is there. Okay, so if I construct an arc onto here, it will run through this point. And now I would like to find like those points here. And that's going to be quite easy. From the vanishing point. Now this line, for example, decides how far those corner points actually dip down. This might be a little bit too much. Let's maybe make it like this. Okay. And right, one, two, three. So on this one to there, to there, this one to there. And then I have to push those handles out a little bit so you get the feeling of this part being arced there. Now we can see that that surface is arced. So how do you actually now project, for example, this through this to the other side? Um, sounds complicated. However, it is not really. So uh, from there to the vanishing point, I need to create a line like this because it cuts this line down there. And from there till there, I have this other line. And this is actually very helpful for one very simple reason. This point, I know, I need to find this point. So I can take, for example, this line, create another line to the vanishing point. There, now I have this point. This point I have. Now I need to find this point somewhere there. So the same, copy and paste. 
there. Perfect. So for example, this arc actually now I could copy and paste. Rotate this a little bit. And this plus minus should match. For example, here in the back, this one I'm going to delete. Those points I move down. Sketch in this line. There. For example, now you can see really nicely how from the side actually the, the top part is curved and the, the front and the back vertical face is tapered in. Now the tricky part might be how do I get this curve projected actually through this section. But again, that's not really that difficult and my big and best friend is our construction plane. So what I'm going to do from the vanishing point, create another line. And this line, for example, should touch it here. And for example, there, straight down this way, okay. And uh, let me think for a second. Yeah, so this one, I copy and paste. And for example, along my boundary box, I try to repeat this line. See there, and for example, I make a line down. And that's because this way, you know, I, I can find this edge going down, where is this curve going to be? Now this point I have to transfer back. But before I can do this, uh, I have to do a little bit more drawing. Copy and paste. There. Uh, Copy and paste there. And then for example, there is our other cube. You see there's again, there we were like constructing cubes. Uh, straight down to there. So the, the lines there actually overlay really a lot. But look what we have now. So you see this vertical line I have and this arc is cut there. This vertical line I have. So somewhere there, this arc has to run through. So I can, for example, now take this one, copy and paste, and maybe move this point roughly to there. And then this one should be roughly to there. And if I draw now from the vanishing point a line to this point, it should run through here. So let's see if actually my drawing is accurate enough. And as you can see, it does there. So with all the stuff done, what we can do now is actually uh, Let's see. I want to be careful now that I remove stuff I still need. Okay, this can go, this can go. This line will be down there. This will be there. This line, technically speaking, you don't really see. So uh, 
whoops, wrong line. There. There it is. So nicely, this line also cuts the line here. Uh, so no one need to figure out this point somewhere there. Uh, that one, for example, actually is going to be very easy. So for example, uh, this is my vanishing line. Copy and paste, move it to there. So there I have this point. So for example, this line should be down there. And this is not 100% correct, but I have I would have to figure out exactly the correct point there. Uh, but I'm just going to copy and paste this over quickly so you roughly can get a feeling for it. And it seems, for example, this one has to be a little bit more like this, prospectively for shortened. Yep, so that seems to do it. There. Oh, one moment. Okay, nearly deleted the line I need. There, this one I need. This one then can go. Move down, delete, delete. Move down, delete, delete. And yeah, so there we can see now how you start seeing that actually not only this face is linear, but also those lines are slightly arced. And uh, of course, you can see that the arcs I constructed here in Illustrator are not really perfect. Uh, and that is actually more an issue in Illustrator simply because of how Illustrator works. It's not really the best tool to do perspective drawings, isometry or orthographics are very easy. Everything else is going to be a little bit more tricky with Illustrator. Then there actually with freehand, you are much, much faster. So uh, those arcs, for example, they're not perfect right now. But that's because uh, it would be more time consuming to create those with the pen tool so that match by hand that you're faster. Uh, there is actually one last thing I would like to point out before uh, I close this video. And that is actually a small uh, demonstration about now how, for example, you can make a drawing more readable. For example, right now this is a flat surface and this is a flat surface and that might be difficult to really understand. But what you can do is put down something that's called contour lines. And what contour lines means is you uh, Hold on. This has to be rotated actually. So midpoint, for example, the contour line would be probably a little bit like this. From there, coming from the vanishing point, going straight down. So you see the vertical line here tells me, hey, this phase actually goes up and down. This line going to the vertical, yeah, to the left vanishing point is going to tell me that this line is going to uh, horizontally to the back. Now with this line being at an angle, and if I connect this to here, I can maybe start understanding, is the surface slightly rotated or should it, is this surface going straight down? And obviously this is wrong, and you see this by the proportions. So by having this, line being perfectly drawn along the midpoint in perspective for shortening, you can explain somebody 
how far, for example, this face is rotated. And then also for uh, our curves, like on top, let me try to quickly find something that maybe might roughly look okay. Actually, this is not too bad, so let's keep it there for a second. Let me clean this up just a notch. And right now, for example, in my drawing, those lines are all drawn with the same thickness. But for example, with a pen, I would apply a much less, a much less pressure. So I see the thicker lines describing the outside proportion, and then those lines on my faces start helping me to really see uh, my object. And hold on, let me actually hide those and this there. This now explains it much better. For example, because of this line being straight vertical, I can really understand, hey, this line and this line means that those faces are rotated to the center. And then with this arc and this arc and this arc, of course, I understand that uh, my line is arced or the surface on top is not straight or flat. And then with those, with this line being at an angle, this, as you can feel, goes to the vanishing point being horizontal, this going straight down. Uh, actually, this is not really 100% correct because if those lines are at an angle, then that's not possible. So uh, this actually might have to look a little bit more like this. Yeah, see, there it is. Okay, so also as a tip, now when you feel like your your shapes or your flow is difficult to, to understand, put those mesh lines or control lines with a really light pen pressure onto it and your object will be a lot more informative. I hope this also explains pretty well how, for example, I constructed the front part and the top arc part. And then in the last video, I'm going to show then how, for example, I would create also the sides to be slightly arced.